Councilors we'll and guests, I call the Standing Committee on Finance meeting to order for May 4th, 2015. It's about 7.07 and a half p.m. Councilors, just to bring to your attention again and to viewers that are watching or trying to watch and to guests that are here, still having some difficulties with cable. So we could be, as I've expressed before, we could be bouncing on the station, but um, as always, once they show the, the repeat of the uh, meeting, it seems to be um, uh, much clearer for, for viewing. Just wanted to make sure that everybody uh, knows that. Just a couple of uh, things before we do begin with some housekeeping uh, items. Um, we have a very small agenda, so item number two shouldn't have probably been put on at that particular, at that, um, for this particular meeting, and that may have been at my fault, um, as we discussed at the last meeting that we weren't sure of a date. So I believe, uh, Council Barnes, um, you're going to move to? Yes, we're looking at uh, scheduling Congressman Lynch to come next week um, with the schedule. He's trying to fix everything in and put everything in with all the other cities and towns that are having meetings. And tonight he's actually, uh, I believe, in Hull and Situate. So um, we're trying to shoot for him to be here next week. But if we could just keep it open so when I get the schedule, uh, I'll be able to really so I, I would I would uh, indicate postpone. the postpone until our next finance meeting, but I think possibly what we would be hearing is that he could be at the city council meeting for next Monday evening, is, and you and I if spoke about that. If that's acceptable, yes. Right, and I, don't, I wouldn't have a problem with that. So, so at this time, you're going to make a motion to postpone to the next finance meeting. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we postpone item number two to the next finance Second. meeting. Second. Yeah. Motion has been made and second that we postpone item number two to the next finance meeting. All in favor? Opposed? Mr. We Chairman, postpone that. item number three, Council Sullivan. Uh, for number three, uh, if it could be read, and then I'll and I'll just make a postponement, and I'll tell you why. Exactly. If we can take number three out of order right now. Second. Motion been made and seconded. To take item number three out of order. All in favor? Opposed. We'll take item number three out of order. And Madam Clerk, would you please read it? Resolved that Mr. Mark Lindy, General Manager of the Brockton Community Access and a representative from Comcast, come before the Finance Committee to discuss and explain the recent interruption to the live broadcast of the Brockton City Council meetings in what corrective action is planned. Invited Mark Lindy, GM, Brockton Community Access, Comcast representative. Mr. Chairman. Council Sullivan. I'm going to make a motion to postpone this. And uh, I mean, I, I, I don't minimize uh, the, uh, the intent of the resolve. I, I think it's extremely important. Mr. Lindy was. Uh, ready, willing, and able to come here tonight. Uh, unfortunately, one of the Comcast representatives uh, as of this afternoon wasn't able to attend. So I really thought it would be in the best interest of the City of Brockton to have both parties here. Um, so I'm going to make a motion to uh, postpone this uh, to the next FinCom. And uh, I'm hoping to, uh, and with you, Mr. Chairman, take a tour uh, with Mr. Lindy of uh, the wiring. He, he uh, offered that proposal today so we could see what, what he thinks the problem is. Okay, second. great, we can do that. Motion's been made and second that this item is going to be postponed to the next finance meeting, which will be May 18th. All in favor? Opposed? That item is also postponed, Councilors. Councilors, just while I also have this in front of me, I received a letter from uh, Mr. Santos, who's chairman of the Information Technology Board, and uh, an oversight um, on my behalf as council president, but I need to appoint a member of the city council to serve on the city's IT board. Um, I'm going to leave that in your minds, and maybe you can think about that, and if somebody's interested in, um, in doing that, they meet once a month, second Wednesday of each month, 8.45 a.m., right in the GAR room. Um, I served on it uh, last year. Unfortunately, my schedule didn't allow me to be there at every meeting, but I was uh, the member last year. So if anyone's interested in, in doing so, maybe you can touch base with me before the end of, end of the meeting. Again, um, it's the second uh, Wednesday of uh, each month at 8.45 a.m. And just while it's also in front of me, just remember, Councilors, next Monday when we come into the Council Chambers, we need to be here at 7 o'clock p.m. as we're going to be having our uh, Council picture taken at that point in time. Um, Madam Clerk, we're going to start with item number one. Order transfer of 275000 from the Treasurer's Debt Service to the Treasurer's Tax Collector Medicare tax. This transfer is necessary to cover the expected shortfall through to the remainder of the fiscal year due to cuts to the budget request and because of payroll and overtime costs, which were higher than the Medicare tax budget anticipated. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Martin Brophy, Treasurer Collector. Good evening, Mr. Brophy. Good evening, Councilors. Any uh, comments uh, before? This line item is actually the city's portion of the Medicare tax. Uh, the Medicare tax is 2.9 percent, 1.5 is the employee, 1.45 is the uh, employer. So Motion to approve. Second. Motion been made and seconded to send this back to the full city council. All in favor? 
Opposed? Goes back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Brophy. <laughs> we go to item number four. Order that in accordance with chapter 23, section 30, F6 of the revised ordinances of the city of Brockton, the city council approves the Brockton Water Commission recommended 30% increase, 15% water rate increase effective July 1st, 2015, and another 15% increase effective July 1st, 2016. The increase will address the current needs of the water division, including but not limited to capital projects. EPA, DEP mandates, and Aquaria contract services, as well as personal services. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Lawrence Raleigh, DPW Commissioner, Ozzie Jordan, Chairman, Water Commission. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilors, if you recall, at our last finance meeting, we had a lengthy discussion in regards to this particular order that uh, you see here before us. It's uh, making a recommendation from the Brockton Water Commission at a 30% increase. At the same time, during our discussion, Mr. Condon also um, made a quick presentation in regards to what he thought was a different alternate plan, um, was asked to even prepare an alternate, alternate plan um, coming even from the, from the mayor's office as well, because not knowing whether or not this was the flavor of something that the city council was looking to do at a 30% rate increase. Um, I'm going to allow Mr. Condon to, to speak briefly in regards to what, um, you know, his plan um, as he's presented to us. And I think you all received something either via by email or if not, I know there was some hard copies of a, of a plan that uh, he had also made um, available to everyone. But I, I do not want us to really detail and go back into our full discussion of what we had two weeks ago. Um, I have my own thought on that, but I'm only one here and I'm only the chairman, but I just, I just think that, you know, we'll listen to his plan, um, see what direction we may be going with the, um, with the other um, plan that is before us, calling for the 30% increase. Maybe we, we amend that or, or we just uh, strike it all together and have a new proposal put before the city council, which could be in time for next Monday's council meeting and then be brought before the finance committee meeting for the following week. Um, any such council solid yeah, I mean, uh, just in, in that light I mean it, it may depending on how uh, the body decides to go it, it may be a cleaner version uh, re relative to having a new order uh, submitted into the record as opposed to amending it and amending it as such but um, by all means I want to thank mr. Conan because he, he he's a man of his word and he got us the information and I think that the appetite for that in my own humble opinion is much uh, much easier to swallow than the, than the 30 percent Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. you, Councilor. Any other comments anyone has on, on that? I think we all realize as a, as a council that something needs to be done. I don't think anybody's shying away from that fact, to be truthful with you. Uh, I think it's just how we, we present it and, and we present it to you know, the people, the taxpayers of the city of Brockton, especially those that are, are greater water users to those that you know, are not you know, um, in that level of being the greater water users as well. We're trying to level it as, as well as we can. So. Um, at this point in time, if anyone doesn't have any other, you know, uh, question or concerns, I'm going to allow Mr. Condon to come up and uh, um, also talk about what he uh, presented to us. And it was vague at that particular point, Mr. Condon, so I'll all right. allow you to go into the discussion somewhat. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you. Councilors, um, I think we all know that the time has come that the city has to do something about the water rates. It's, it's important for the uh, stability of the Water Enterprise Fund. Um, I think the Water Commission, which knows its budget best, knows that it needs a substantial rate increase and the problem seems to be the size of the increase at one time 30 percent over two years is perhaps more than the counselors or the political structure is willing to accept so what i presented to you by email basically tried to take uh, the concept and ex extend it over a couple of extra years so that by the end of the fourth year you'd have had a little bit more revenue than you would have had in the two it spreads it out some it tried to do a couple of other things Obviously, it wouldn't be as much in any single year as it was for the Water Commission's uh, proposal. It also tries to make it a little less burdensome on the lower income, the lower users, and also a little less burdensome on the very largest uh, water users who are also significant employers in the city. And if your inclination is such, I can provide this, which now is just a spreadsheet, but I can provide it to you by Monday night in the form of an order so that you can move on this particular recommendation as opposed to the water commission one my only recommendation would be we need to do something because the uh, the time has come we can't put the rate off any longer exactly so and, and we and we would want to have it done by the time we would go into summer session yes. anyways because then we're into the budget uh, the budget few weeks and uh, then we're at the end of the fiscal year so councils any um any questions that council denapoli 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Conner. Good evening. Um, we, have, uh, we have one more finance committee meeting for the month of May, correct? Yes. <clears throat> okay. On, maybe on, on your recommendations, Do what I'd like it? to see is Do why don't we... Uh, what, what I, Do I was talking to uh, okay. Mr. Raleigh and, and uh, the, uh, the commission. We have to do something here. And uh, the 30% is it's a little too unbalanced, especially for the high water users in the city. We don't want to jeopardize any of those. We, we have a few, and uh, they're, they're paying a, a high rate now. What I would like to see is 10-10, uh, and I want an increment maybe 2 or 3% for the third year and for the fourth year where we're going to build this in so like it'll be a not a cost of living increase for water, but some kind of an increase that is going to be uh, sort of just built in so it's an automatic, it'll, it'll just happen. And if we could increment that into the so-called 30% maybe within the next five years, you think we can do something like that? Well, that would be a substitution for the work I've done, which is also fine. I think the important thing is, you know, I can go to work on that as well. The important thing is you've got to be certain that you're generating enough revenue so that you don't have a service impact in next year's budget. I think that's, uh, that's a concern I've got. So 10%, in across every block it's simpler for for me to run a spreadsheet that does that than the one i've done the one i did was based on a conversation with the mayor i can provide that for you as well so uh, i guess i'll give you two on monday night you got this one and i'll give you another one which is 10 percent across each of the blocks and then a couple of years on the back end where you're on a kind of cost of living after you've got the the 10 percent accomplished for several years well you will yes it'll be 10 percent for 2015 yep. which is now yep 10% after July 1st for next year's budget. Well, if you do 10% for 2015, Councillor, you're going to have a, uh, basically, I'm not sure there are any mailings left in 2015 that you could accomplish that. Right. So, okay, so it wouldn't take effect until 2016. Yeah, so you're talking about 2016 right. and, and 2017. And at 10 and 10. 17. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Connor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Councillor Cruz. Thank you. So, Jay, thanks for getting, getting this to us. But I also, there's a lot of numbers here. So this table you sent us is basically spreading it. The first increase is fiscal year 16. Yes. And this spreads it through 19, 2019. Yes, it's four years. And basically, and again, I'm looking at it and I'm a little. So the, the bottom rate payer and the top rate payer, we've thinned down, whittled down that percentage. It, yes. Going by this. Yeah, the middle blocks get a heavier hit. The middle blocks get some 20% increases in order to let that happen. And this may be for somebody from the Water Commission, but, uh, and then this gives, over those four fiscal years, does it come out to be about a 30%? No, because in the fourth year, you'd actually go by uh, what? what the Water Commission would have accomplished in two years. In two years. You'd get there in a little bit, three, in three years plus, and in the fourth year, ahead of the game, and they wouldn't maybe need a rate increase for another year after that. But this does... If we were to go with your recommendation on this table, it does take care of fiscal year 16 that we should be able to. Yeah, fund I think the, the budget will be squeezed, Councillor. I think the capital programs that they're wanting to undertake uh, would be pretty seriously pared down. Uh, the city would have a choice to make, and the mayor would have a choice to make when he recommends the budget to city council. One choice would be the general fund is squeezed this year too. I mean, we're playing in a in a world where nobody wants to raise taxes. That's what I figured. So without a tax increase, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you right now, we have a very serious budget problem if you're not willing to raise two and a half. I don't know what the mayor will do, but we do. So uh, I don't know where he'll come down on that. But the water division still owes the general fund money from a couple of years back when it didn't pay its expenses that the general fund pays. So this rate increase, 10%, as Council on Adapoli recommends, or this program here, will allow us probably to do one of two things. Either pay the general fund back, which it needs, or to undertake a more aggressive capital program, which the system needs. You can't do both, and you need the 30% over two years to do both. And some of the capital issues, or at least one we know, is mandated to, to be done. Yes, uh, but there again, um, 
That particular program, I think, we'll be able to do next year because we would do it under a borrowing. Under if the we borrowing. structured it in such a way there wouldn't be a fiscal 16 impact of that borrowing, it would be fiscal 17. Fiscal 17. Yes. So we should be able to pay back the, the fund. So basically, it's pay me now or pay me later. Yeah. I mean, so if we were to go to this, that's, that money raised in 16 will allow us to pay back the money that the general fund. Uh, which is taxpayers' money, yes. as opposed to ratepayers' money. Yes, we had to use. Yes, so that's the right. ratepayers, which are <laughs> substantially the same, but not completely the same. Not exactly the same. We have we have ratepayers who are outside of the uh, Brockton tax domain. No, and if you think about the largest taxpayers in Brockton, if they get a free ride on that, they pay substantial amounts of money in property taxes, <laughs> and they don't use that kind of water. I'm talking. No, but about what I'm that. talking about is we have a fairly sizable amount of ratepayers who are in. Whitman, Abington, yes. Hanson. So we, what we have done essentially in the past is the taxpayers of Brockton have subsidized some of those ratepayers. Yes. So it's very important that we raise that money and pay back the yes. general fund so that those ratepayers, and again, I don't know if it's 5% or so, but it's a, it's a substantial enough amount of people that are outside of the taxpaying domain, outside of the Brockton geopolitical area that were subsidized by Brockton taxpayers. That's correct. And so we really need to pay that money back first, which this, uh, this block change would, would do. And then through the four years, it, would, it should take us through beyond eventually the 30% and hopefully get us back to where we... Yes, I, I agree. And I think either Council DiNapoli's suggestion of a series of 10% increases across the board or this particular complicated one that I developed, either, either one would accomplish about the same amount of revenue generation. And basically, as I look at this, the third and fourth blocks are where we're kind of concentrating in your... Yes. And maybe Larry can answer this or something. Who typically is in that third and fourth block? Are they... Apartment complexes, or are they just? I would think they're multi-families, small businesses. Small businesses and multi-families. I mean, yes. it's. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get a grasp on that. You know, I do agree with Councillor uh, DiNapoli. We don't want to hurt that small taxpayer, that small homeowner, but we also don't want to chase our, our water-using businesses out of town either, That's by right. uh, a, a really substantial top rate either, uh, which is already a fairly high. The, fit, the block rate is already fairly high at the top. For those high users, yes it is. Um, okay, and so this brings us through 19. 2019. With your recommendation, okay. I guess that answers my questions. Uh, thank you, Council. Thank you, thank you, Council. Mr. Councilor Chairman. Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thanks again, Mr. Condon, uh, <laughs> on this. I, I just had a kind of a follow-up from last week when we were talking about Tory and, and Tina. And we talked about the idea of, of floating a bond yeah. and amortizing it and kind of burning it out. Um, would, would, the, would the process be almost simultaneously, Jay, you'd be out trying to get the market yeah. while we're? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I think my my idea, Council, would be to bring, uh, the, there are a number of things I think which we need to bring to the City Council in addition to the budget. Uh, even though borrowing may not have any impact the way I'm thinking about doing it on the fiscal 16 budget. If we borrowed in July and had a short-term note, doable the following year with the interest of the following year next year you wouldn't have any interest expense we're, we're squeezed on fiscal 16's budget now, as I said I haven't gone through it with the mayor I don't know what his position is going to be with the levy but we're pretty seriously squeezed on that budget but we've got some needs that need to be taken care of the water department is one of those in the uh, general fund budget there are several capital items which we can no longer defer I know that Councilor Rodriguez and all of you are very concerned about the uh, fire department's uh, apparatus uh, a lease is one way to go, but another way to go is to put it into a capital borrowing with a whole bunch of other projects and get it immediately that way as well. So I think we need to come to you <coughs> next few weeks with a significant borrowing, but it wouldn't have an impact on fiscal 16's budget. But when we go to sell the bond anticipation note, they'll want to know what have you done on your revenue side. So I know I know my colleague, uh, State Rep and City Council, well, I was very concerned about Tina. So they, they yep. Everything would be wrapped into one. We just yeah, we put done. that into a borrowing as well. All right, all right. And my, my other follow-up question is kind of piggybacks, uh, Mr. Cruz. In terms of um, your proposal relative to Block Two, and uh, for fiscal 2016, be of a 20 percent. Yes. Um, this, and I don't know anything about cubic feet. So 751 to 1250. I know my concern and my colleagues' concern with the seniors and the elders and stuff. What what is that Block Two? Tim just asked you about block three and four, but what is that common? Well, uh, block one uh, is 
is a representation of the minimum charge. Yeah. And there are very few people, I think maybe only 1,000 people who are on the minimum charge. The next block uh, takes you up to 5,000 cubic feet a year. That's a really small user. The typical family of four uses about 12,000 cubic feet, so you're talking about 5,000 there. That's another block I'm trying to protect with this rate proposal. Five to 10 gets a little bit of a heat, but if you, hit, if you go above 10 to 12, uh, there is a more significant uh, uh, whack. But for the typical family of four, only 2,000 cubic feet a year are in that last block. The other ones are in the lower ones. After that, you're running into the multifamilies and the small business users small businesses. Where, the, where the percentages are higher. Okay. I mean, I think, I think it, again, I'm only one of 11, but I think it makes sense to take a vote on what was proposed to us and then have an or two orders submitted on Monday night. I think that makes more sense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank thank you, you Councilor. Councilors, um, motion. I'm gonna make a uh, an unfavorable recommendation of order number four back to the full city council. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Send back uh, item number four with an unfavorable recommendation to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? That goes back to the full city council with an unfavorable recommendation. Now we need um, a motion to submit, um, it'd be a substitute order, I believe, council, so I need a motion, correct, yeah. Mr. Condon? Or I can provide it for you on Monday night if you, if you prefer. Point of Is information, it, Mr. Chairman, I think that we've please. already voted. Yeah, so. We've already voted, so that would take a new order to come in. So he'll, 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 you present Monday that? Night. I'll yeah. prepare an okay. order for Monday night, and I'll yeah. prepare two. You'll have one on Council of Dinapolis and one on this one because I can't tell from the council right now which, which exactly. is Exactly, and then that way there, that will move ahead to our next finance meeting for uh, Monday, May the 18th. So it gives us enough time um, to do what we have to do as well. Correct? In point knows? of information, and then we have a final council meeting on the 20, Tuesday after right, we'll Memorial Tuesday Day. Tuesday after Memorial Day, exactly, okay. yeah. So we still have... Have it done by then. Yeah. We should be able to have it done we'll, by then. We'll have something wrapped up by then. Everybody in agree, agreeable to that uh, status? Mm. Okay. okay, and then... Uh, just do whatever and put, you know, I can sponsor both, whatever, we'll get it done, okay? All right. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Thank, thank you, Thanks, Councilor. Mr. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Sullivan. Do we, do we have any uh, expectation of timing of when the budget? We do. The last time I met with the mayor, I will be meeting with him uh, tomorrow because he's back in town, but the last time that I met with him, our discussion was they were anticipating that the budget would come to us by at least May 22nd to give us all that last full week into May, and I would probably, probably like we've done in the past, look to schedule our hearings probably for like the first week in June. So I'll have a better handle on that yep. tomorrow and then I'm gonna let you all know that so you can get that in your calendars. because That's kind of what you're gauging right now. Yeah, that's what I'm gauging and probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is, is an alternate, uh, uh, you know, an extra night like we've always done in the past, similar to what uh, you did former president as well. So, but I'll give you that uh, information next Monday night. Thank okay? you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Mr. Chairman, right. a moment of yes. privilege. Yes, you may. Thank you. On behalf of um, the Beautification Committee, the DPW and the Mayor's Office, I would like to thank everybody that participated in last Saturday's Keep Brockton Beautiful Day. Um, we had a really wonderful turnout. It was a great event. We had people out coming from outside of Brockton to come clean Brockton, which I thought was really great. So um, I just want to thank everybody, and I would like everybody to continue cleaning Brockton every day to keep it beautiful. So um, once again, thank you. I would also like to announce uh, my Ward 7 meeting, which is co-sponsored by my um, colleague, Councilor at Large, Shana Barnes. It's this Thursday at 7 o'clock. It's May 7th at 7 p.m. at North Junior High School. And lastly, I'd like to wish two people, two Cinco de Mayo babies. Um, first off, my uh, youngest child, Georgina. She will be 12 tomorrow, and so will my state representative, Michael Brady. So happy Yay. birthday to both right. of them. He'll be 12. Happy, bir happy, <laughs> birthday, happy birthday to all. Thank, thank you, you uh, thank you, Councilor, and thank you and, and all those that participated in, in Sadie's event with uh, Keeping Brockton uh, a Beautiful, and, and we do appreciate uh, your efforts there as well. Mr. Chairman, uh, Council, Council moment Sullivan. of personal privilege. Uh, we're having an ordinance committee meeting here tomorrow night, six o'clock. Uh, we, we have a pretty good agenda, so if you're a member of the committee, please be here at 6 o'clock. And if, uh, if you're not a member of the committee and you want to be here, we welcome you. Thank you. And that's tomorrow evening, 6 p.m., the ordinance uh, committee meeting will be, uh, be held. Any other business to come before this uh, group this evening? Seeing none, meeting adjourned.